Assalamu alaikum to everybody. I am Muhammad Abdul Lawn, lecturer CMS Model High School Institute, Kogwara. So far as our today's lecture is concerned, we are going to take law of demand, its assumptions and limitations. Starting from the descriptive meaning of the law of demand, law of demand is an important law of economics. This law, I mean to say, law of demand has a significant importance in the study of economics. This law was firstly propounded by Professor Alfred Marshall. This law states, I mean to say, law of demand states a functional relationship between price and quantity demanded of a commodity. Price of a particular good and its quantity the quantity I mean to say the units of the commodity, the total amount demanded of a commodity. Most of the essential point to note is that the law of demand states a functional relationship between price and quantity demanded of a commodity and it shows an inverse relationship between the price and demand which means the price and the quantity demand of a particular commodity moves to the opposite directions. This Inverse relationship, I mean to say, when price of a commodity increases, it is demand decreases, it is quantity demand decreases. And when price of a commodity falls, its demand increases. This is how we are explaining the inverse relationship between the quantity demand of a commodity and its price. When we are concerned with the, this uh, inverse relationship, we are going to take the definition of the Professor Albert Marshall, who is the propounder of this law of demand. Professor Alfred Marshall. Professor Alfred Marshall was the first neoclassical economist who propounded this law of demand. He says, other things remaining constant, other things remaining constant, quantity demand of a commodity increases with a fall in price and diminishes with a rise in price. This is how Professor Alfred Marshall has quoted the inverse relationship between the price and quantity demanded in his definition. So, in the meaning, we come to know that law of demand has an importance to show the inverse relationship between the price and the demand. Now we are coming towards the assumptions of the law of demand. We have some assumptions of the law of demand. If these assumptions fulfilled, the law of demand is applicable. The first assumption is no change in the price of a related commodity. The law is based on an uh, assumption, which means no change in the price of related goods. I mean to say related goods, substitute goods, related good of a particular commodity. The law is not applicable when there is a change in the price of its substitute. When there is a change in the price of its related go good. So it is important here that there should be no change in the price of the related good which will bring change in the quantity demand of the particular commodity. Number second is no change in income of the consumer. One more assumption, the law is applicable only if there is no change in the consumption of the consumer, no change in the income of the consumer. When income of the consumer increases, this means there will be definitely a change in the quantity demand of the commodity, which will increase by the increase in its in change in income. So it is necessary that income of the consumer should remain same. Number third, no change in the taste and preferences, habit, fashion of the consumer. One more assumption of the law is that this law is applicable only if the there is no change in the fashion. There is no change in the tastes and preferences of the consumer. This means that the tastes and the preferences of a particular consumer for a commodity should remain constant. And fashion should not, there should be no change in the fashion because when there is a change in the fashion that increase the amount, demand of the commodity even if the price is high. This is essential that there should be a no change in the tastes, preferences, custom, fashion and habits of a consumer. No change in the size of the population. This is one more assumption that 
law of demand which shows the inverse relationship between the price and quantity demanded has an assumption that there should be no change in the size of the population then the law of demand is applicable and the last one is no expectations regarding future change in price one more assumption of the law of demand is that no expectation regarding the future change in price there should be no change in the there no expectation consumers should not expect that the price of a commodity is going to be changed in near future so the law is applicable only if this this one this one more assumption fulfills no expectations regarding future change in prices these are the assumptions of the law of demand on which the law of demand is based now we are coming towards how we are explaining how we can explain the law of demand which is proposed by professor alfred marshall who is a neoclassical economist we are coming towards the point that how this law can be explained with the help of a demand schedule and demand curve here i have already prepared this demand schedule when we are discussing the demand schedule we are saying that demand schedule is a table or a chart which shows different combinations of a commodity at the different prices we have a table here in the first column we are taking the price in kgs and quantity price in kgs price in kgs means price price per kg price per kg in rupees quantity demanded in kgs in the first column we are showing the price in rupees per kg in the second column we are showing the quantity demanded of the commodity in kgs initially the price of a commodity let us say apples let us say apples price of 1 kg of apple cost us rupees 10 total demand is 10 kgs in the second instance when price falls it falls from 10 to 8 quantity demanded of the apples increases from 10 kgs to 20 kgs again there is a fall in price from 8 to 6 quantity demand increases from 20 kg to 30 kg again there is a fall in price from rupees 6 per kg to rupees 4 per kg there is an increasing quantity demand of apples from 30 to 40 kg and lastly price again falls from 4 to 2 per kg and quantity demand of apples increases from 40 kg to 50 kg this shows how there is an inverse relationship with fall in price there is an increase in the quantity demand if we are coming from the opposite side let us suppose our initial price is rupees 2 quantity demand is 50 when we are coming from 2 to 4 price increases quantity demand falls from 50 to 40 and so on this means amount demand of a commodity increases with the fall in price and it diminishes with the rise in price this similar table can be explained with the help of the demand curve and when we are explain the demand curve we are saying that demand curve is nothing it is only a graphical representation it is only a graphical representation of the demand schedule demand curve is nothing it is only a graph it is only a graphical representation of the demand schedule and we are explaining the demand curve here we have two axes starting from the origin this is known as horizontal axis or you can say x axis and this is vertical axis or you can say y axis we are taking the quantity demand of a commodity as we are putting in the example that quantity demand of apples let us say along x axis or horizontal axis and price price of the commodity price per kg of apples along vertical axis or y axis so here initial price is 10 quantity demanded is 10 kgs then price is 8 quantity demand increased to 20 when price falls from 8 to 6 quantity demand increased to, to from 20 kgs to 30 kgs and so on this means as long as the prices of the commodity goes on falling quantity demand increases and we are drawing a demand curve dd dash which meets the different points a b c d and e there are five points so we are we have taken here five types of prices and five combinations of the commodity which explains that the downward slope of the demand curve dd dash your negative slope it, it it explains 
it, it clears that there exists an inverse and opposed relationship between the price and the quantity demand of a commodity. Now we are coming towards the limitations. There are limitations of the law of demand, exceptions where the law of demand is not applicable. The first and the notable limitation is that future price expectations. With this one we have discussed in the assumptions also as well. Future price expectations. This means that when a consumer knows, he came to know in advance that the price of a commodity is going to increase in near future. He demands more of the commodity at present, even if the price is high. So if there is any sort of expectation that price of the commodity is going to be high in near future, law of demand is not applicable. Similarly, one more fear of shortage in near future. This is again a limitation is that when a consumer is feels that the that the quantity that the quantity of a commodity yeah the supply of the commodity is going to be short in near future he has a fear so he tries to demand more at present even if the price is high so there should be no change in the no shortage in the quantity of the commodity then the law of demand is applicable if the consumer feels that the quantity of a commodity is going to be short in future he demands more at present law is not applicable then change in fashion this is one of the important and significant limitation where the law is not applicable when there is a change when a commodity goes out of fashion people do not demand more of it even if the price is low when it is in fashion people demand more of it even if the price is high so there is no influence of prices in case of fashion law of demand is not applicable and lastly, change in income. Change in income is one more limitation, which we have also stated in the assumptions. There should be no change in the income of a particular consumer because the change in income again brings a change in the quantity demand of the commodity in, in spite of prices. So these limitations explains that, that law is not applicable when these sort of limitations are existing there. Lastly, there are two more limitations, Weblian goods and given goods. Those two limitations we are going to explain also in the near, which, which we are taking the second lecture, we are, we are going to explain in those. And thank you very much.